Welcome everyone. Jess and Michelle and Lori and William and Arushi and Jean and Trish and Joy and Kyle. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. Hi, you. Jess, you have the best headphones. Oh, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> I was just here turning my uh, microphone on so I could say I don't see any cats in your background, which doesn't yeah. quite make sense. <laughs> it's midday, so Harper is sleeping on her cat tower right there. And I think the others are on the bed. So. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they'll make an appearance. <laughs> Thank you for the explanation. <laughs> I'm sure it was important. Sometimes I think we should just have a cat show and tell. Like, like really, do we need to talk about Sotal or can we just share a cat? <laughs> I also have this. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I won't use that. <laughs> I am not a cat. Like, it's kind of like the poor lawyer. Oh my god. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I was determined to figure that out because you know that's important. I think that's the best thing that's happened in the pandemic yet. <laughs> I am not a cat. Truly. But I'm ready to go through with it. Remember he said he was willing to argue the case. That's right. <laughs> Maybe for people who are here, we can introduce ourselves in the chat. Just your name and where you're from. Brian, oh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, hello, Brian. <laughs> Hi, you think that after like a full year of doing everything via Zoom, I will remember to unmute. <laughs> Good morning. No, wait, I'm, I'm going to be very clumsy, so no. <laughs> So Washington University, Hi, Winnipeg. of course, Michelle's in Calgary, Joy's in Calgary, our Lethbridge crew, Neil's in Alberta as well. So good to see everybody. Well, you know what? I think we might as well get ourselves going because uh, if people start to enter while Nancy's talking, I'll, I will um, monitor the waiting room as we go. Um, but first of all, I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Andrea Webb and I am uh, one of the VPs for Canada, Canada with the fabulous Melanie Hamilton. Um, and we are your hosts for the West Coast kickoff. Uh, we're very excited to be the final group in that are kicking off ISOTL Connect. Um, and this is a wonderful opportunity to come together as a community. It's been, we were just talking about the fact that it feels like it's been a drought and it's so nice to see people's faces and to connect with our colleagues again and to talk about the things that we are interested in um, beyond teaching and learning on Zoom. So um, I would like to begin with a land acknowledgement. Um, I am coming to you from the west coast of British Columbia, which is on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Uh, Melanie. Hey, my, I'm Mel Hamilton and I'm from Lethbridge, which is two hours south of Calgary, and um, I'm the other VP Canada hanging out with Andrea, and I come from the Treaty 7-8, um, which is the land of our Blackfoot ancestors. Thanks very much, Mel. And so at this point, we're going to turn it over to uh, Nancy Chick, and she's going to give our, our welcome and introduction from the presidential team um, as part of ISOTL. And then Melanie and I are going to come back and we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the events and the processes and how we're going to engage as part of ISOTL Connect. Um, and then we'll have some time for some breakout sessions and, and small group conversation. So uh, Nancy, please. Great. Okay, now um, I'm going to do the obligatory talking through the process of sharing my screen. So uh, bear with me here. Um, we are not Zoom users on my campus, so this is always a challenge. Okay, what do you see? We Somebody see 
slides in presenter mode, we see your um, email. <laughs> there we go. Now we just see the slides. Yeah, in presenter mode in the right, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, didn't see Facebook. So yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us on this uh, um, experiment. The other, the organizing team is calling this a great experiment um, to convene people during a time when um, we really haven't had a chance to hang out. Um, my name is Nancy Chick. I'm co-president of the International Society for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. I'm co-president with Ching Huang Hoon, who is in Singapore. She welcomed the Asia Pacific region and the European region earlier today or in the wee hours of the morning for us. Um, and so as I think Andrea pointed out, we are the last convening group for the event. Um, I've been tasked with telling you a little bit about ISOTL, a little bit of history, who we are, what we do, um, an announcement about an upcoming conference, um, and then I'll turn it over to um, Andrea and Mel. So first, just a little bit of history. Um, if you wanna read the whole history, Dan Bernstein and Gary Poole have a blog post. You'll see the URL at the bottom of the screen. Um, but just to share a few highlights, it's nice to know the history, I think. Many of you know that um, Ernest Boyer's book, Scholarship Reconsidered from 1990, was really the beginning of the idea and the term scholarship of teaching or scholarship of teaching and learning. Um, while plenty of disciplines have been doing this kind of work before 1990, Boyer is really recognized with coining the term that became the really um, multidisciplinary international effort um, that became um, intentional as a group. Uh, so proposing and developing the concept, that was really, um, I think the nugget that started the society. And then to bring the people together, we look to the Carnegie Academy for the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, their cohorts, they're bringing people together to talk about SOTL um, as the beginning of gathering the people. And specifically a meeting in 2004, uh, there were 30 very specific people, our founding members, uh, who got together in Indiana and said, you know, this work needs an international society to support the people. And thus was born ISOTL. Um, the rest of the work is really the formation and um, infrastructure of a professional society. With the first annual conference in 2004, um, conferences since then, I'll talk about those more in just a minute. Um, in 2006, we had in place bylaws and governance and committees. Woohoo! That's very exciting. Um, and then, of course, in 2011, uh, ISOTL founded its journal, Teaching and Learning Inquiry, with its first publication in 2013. So, just a little bit of history of the society ongoing history as we continue to evolve and unfold. Really beginning this year, the society has become much more intentional with a conversation that's been happening in ISOTL, in the hallways, in email, on committees, but not an intentional effort really until now. Uh, there's an inclusion subcommittee of the board that put together these three guiding questions to really um, help us intentionally scrutinize and attend to the I in ISOTL. Um, so that these questions about who's at the table, who's included, who's privileged, and how can we make our work visible in a fair and equi equitable way, um, more intentional across the society. So stay tuned. This event is really our first effort at kind of making that happen. Um, so we'll talk more about the event shortly. So what is ISOTL? We're a professional society, so we have a mission and goals. I think that's required. Um, you can read about that, but I'd like to draw your attention to the bullets on the right. In terms of what we do, we do support the associational life of the scholarly work, but what does that mean? 
um, really, we are here to support, promote, encourage, recognize, and bring together the people who do SOTL, who support SOTL, and who learn from SOTL. So really, that's what iSOTL does. Um, I mentioned the journal. One of the key features of the society is having a journal, teaching and learning inquiry. This is a lot of numbers, and some of them are, um, or the, the numbers are a, a few months old, so they would be updated now. The next issue comes out um, next month. But currently, just to highlight, it's an open access journal available to all aligned with our key values of accessibility and availability, not behind a firewall. Um, when we collected this data, authors had come from 19 countries. My hunch is that number is a little higher now because these numbers are a little old. Same thing with our downloads since 2016. I bet by now it's over 100,000. Um, so we're really proud of teaching and learning inquiry. I also mentioned the annual conference and many of you are familiar with the conference, look forward to the conference. Our goal is to um, host the conference outside of North America every other year. That's a goal. We're really dependent on who offers to host and it's a lot of work. So our goal is sometimes hard to meet, but we really strive for that. Um, so here's just a, a sampling of um, conference programs where we've been. Who is ISOTL? Well, it's the members. It's primarily the members. Um, the numbers on this slide are a little down because uh, due to COVID, we had to cancel our conference in 2020. And that's really where we do a big membership drive. Um, we are a membership driven organization, which means we really rely on members to be vibrant and to evolve. So we hope that many of you will maintain or renew your memberships or join if you're new. Um, you'll see that our membership dues are quite low um, to be inviting. Who is ISOTL? Well, it's a society, so it's also that structure. We have a board of directors supported by an administrative center out of Prince Edward Island in Canada. Uh, we have those two subcommittees of the board. And then we have four really hardworking standing committees made up of members. Um, we also have 12 interest groups um, that are uh, based on different topics and a cohort of ISOTL fellows. Just a quick look at the ISOTL Board of Directors so you can see some of the names, but more interesting than the names, I think, is just to look at the structure of the board. You'll see there's a presidential team. Then there are two vice presidents from our different world regions. And uh, those regions are defined by having at least 50 members. So we ultimately hope to grow the world regions that we represent, um, but that explains the regions you see here. We have two student VPs, which we're really proud of. And then of course, a treasurer and a secretary. Um, shortly, you're going to um, hear from more from Andrea and Mel as the Canadian vice presidents. Um, that'll be far more interesting than me talking at you. Um, so almost done. Just briefly to mention um, why we're having this event. Uh, because we had to cancel the Perth conference in 2020, we didn't want to wait. Uh, you know, our organization, as, as Mel mentioned earlier, we really thrive on those interactions and conversations and sitting down next to each other and, and of course, presentations and those kinds of things, but we didn't want to wait. Um, we were also concerned about the need of emerging scholars, the need to have presentation opportunities. So we wanted to offer that. Um, so we have this shared event, it's free. That was also really important to us. Um, the scheduling makes it more inviting, I think for a global audience, um, but you'll hear more about that shortly. The organizing committee has really done an amazing job with this event, but Mel and Andrea will say more about that shortly. Big announcement, uh, ISOTL 21, after the unfortunate cancellation because of COVID, 
Um, the Perth folks have been wonderful and they are going to host ISOTL 21 virtually because we're still in a pandemic, unfortunately, but we, we will go on. We will um, have a conference. Um, this event right now is kind of a test run for how it might work, um, but save the date. And March 15th is when the call for proposals will come out. I've seen it and it's fabulous. Um, so see more about the conference in the coming days. Um, I'd like to end by just highlighting the range of opportunities for new members to connect and get involved. Um, go to our website and see the Get Involved page. And then finally, just a huge shout out to our small but mighty, emphasis on small, emphasis on mighty, um, organizing committee who put this event together in, I think, two months? Two months. Two months. Um, and, you know, and this is purely volunteer work. So we are so grateful and impressed for this group of uh, superheroes. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to again narrate my <laughs> stop sharing um, and then hand it over to Andrea and Mel um, for uh, talking about the specific event and uh, engagement and I'll be quiet and enjoy the rest of the hour. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Nancy, for the overview of ISOTL. And I, we really encourage you guys to get involved um, in the, the committees in kind of learning more about ISOTL. If you haven't um, been to a conference so far to put in an abstract for your really good ideas for the virtual conference in the October, and then hopefully fingers and toes and everything crossed that we'll be able to get to back together in 2022. Um, so you can be hanging out with all your SOTL fellow friends, and it is a conference like no other. I will tell you the first time I went to an ISOTL conference, I was like, I finally found my people. And it was like, just once you're there, you're hooked. So we look forward to our virtual presentations for now and then in-person presentations in the future. So I'll just quickly give an overview. Nancy kind of touched base on how we structured the conference for the next three days. Um, but what we really wanted in a big theme was accessibility. Um, we know in pandemic times, of course, we can't travel, but we also know due to budgets and travel, we're not always able to get together at conferences. And sometimes we're, we're kind of more stuck at home. So this is a really good way to have everybody kind of get, get together and listen to what's out there and um, kind of see and hear what our fellow friends are doing. And then you never know, that might spark a really good idea. It might spark a future collaboration with other people. So you will note um, and has been tweeted out if you're on Twitter that they are releasing everything on YouTube so that you can watch your presentations at your own time when you have time, which is a really nice um, way to, to be able to to take your time you, and one thing is then you're not missing out because they're at a, a scheduled time and so this way you can watch them at two in the morning in your jammies eating ice cream or from your desk during your office hours so so that's a, a really big bonus to the structure and then the videos are short so you can kind of come and go as you please and then you get to hear from people all over the world it's not just one particular region the five regions um, so it'll be interesting to see how SOTL compares to what you do in your region versus what SOTL might be in one of the other regions. So it's convenient, they're short, and they're kind of at your viewing pleasure. And Nancy um, has just put into the link into the chat the link um, for the Cluster One conference um, pr presentations. So does if, does anybody have any questions about the way that we structured the conference? If not, I'm gonna pass it to Andrea and she's gonna explain a little bit about our three themes. Great, thanks very much, Mel. Um, so as you will notice, the, the conference um, or the ISOTL Connect has been clustered around three themes. We're talking about SOTL during COVID pedagogies. We're talking about um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice. And we're looking at SOTL partnerships. 
And the idea behind this was to provide ways of not only processing some of the things that we're going through very currently, but also looking at how it is that SOTL can be um, the, the place that people come into for engagement in areas that they may not necessarily have been part of. And we obviously as a board have made a, a very strong commitment um, to diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice as, as some of the foundational pieces that are part of how the board is working right now. Um, and we're wanting to amplify that. And we're wanting to amplify the diversity of voices because this is an international organization. And I think up to this point, we've tended to have a fairly North American focus um, and we're trying to broaden that and we're trying to include as many voices as we can. And a big part of that also has to do with emerging voices. Um, and we're looking for emerging scholars, we're looking for graduate students and, and the focus behind um, that as, as a driving force in terms of who is presenting and who is leading some of these events. Um, I'm gonna make a, a shameless pitch. I'm really excited for the, um, the video that I was part of with the SOTL partnerships because it actually was driven by the graduate student who is a member of our group. And so she put the questions together, she drove the, the presentation and as well as the video that, that came out of it. So I'm really excited to see, that's just one example, but I'm really excited to see the way that we are encouraging um, emerging scholars, we are, I mean, we, we live that idea of the big tent, right? We want everybody to be coming in and to be part of our community because it is a very welcoming community. And it, it's one of those things that a number of people talk about your first SOTL conference and you come to ISOTL and you find your people. Um, the number of times that people say that, I found my people. Um, and I think that that's a really powerful part of what ISOTL offers is that place and space outside of our usual work where we can get together with a diversity of people who have different perspectives, but all help and support each other um, as we're doing this work. So those are kind of the, the ways that we're hoping to amplify different voices as part of this as well. These are short videos. Um, we also were looking for the idea of a low stakes engagement. They don't have to be presented on Zoom. They can be recorded. They can be snapshots. They can be snippets of things that are happening, but hopefully they are a starting place for the conversations that you might be interested in engaging with as well. And hopefully you're interested in taking some of these ideas and putting in proposals for the Perth conference that we're, we're also looking at this as a jumping off place. We're looking at, at this as a starting place for some of those conversations that we're hoping to carry into the October conference and into ISOTL in the coming years as we continue to evolve as an organization. Um, so I think Mel, you're gonna go talk a little bit about the guiding principles in terms of what to listen for, um, some suggestions in terms of how we engage with the videos, and then we will uh, go out into some breakout groups for some small conversation. Perfect. So as Andrea and I were talking and thinking like what kind of advice or suggestions could we give to you guys um, as you're watching the next um, two days uh, worth of presentations, we thought for early career researchers and even those who have participated in SOTL before is to pay attention to a couple things that the presenters are saying. And so one of the things is what's their passion? Where, where did they get their idea? Like where, what kind of, where did they start? And so kind of pay attention to if they talked about the journey to how they started SOTO and where they what, what they're doing in their classrooms or at the MISO macro level, which is the program or institutional level. Another thing we were encouraging you guys to do is if they have a research question, how did they structure their research question? Did they use Hutchings taxonomy of what is or the visions of the possibility or like what the, what what could work? So kind of pay attention to the way they structure their research question. And then just to follow along with kind of the way the research process goes, did they tell you about their method or methodology or both? And if they did, what did they use? Did they do qualitative or quantitative and what theories did they use to guide their research? And then of course, how, how did they collect their data? Um, was it a small group through focus groups? Was it a larger survey? that they did because one of the things we know when we in SOTO and which is so fabulous and very different than sometimes discipline based research is we can share our successes and our failures. So if something didn't work quite as good as we thought it was is we encourage people to present on that and why didn't it work and what we, could we do better the next time and not even do better in the sense of it was a, a negative experience but perhaps we learned something from that that will then inform us for another research project. 
And then what were their findings? Like, what did they find out? What did they learn? What did they share through their journey? And then is there anything that I can use that they shared to put into my own classroom or into my own work? So those are some of the things we're encouraging you to think about. Um, and then another thing is, like, what are your existing projects and how could you then take that existing project that you have a really good idea and then make it into a project of your own? And then if you're in the middle of a project, how can I then share out to the larger ISOTL community um, at either the Perth conference that will come up this next in this next October or the following year when we're hopefully face to face is what can I then share? Because we all have value and we all do really amazing things in our classrooms. And it's kind of like a conversation starter. And then the last thing we kind of thought too is as you're listening is try to find your friends. Perhaps someone is doing something similar to what you're doing, or perhaps that's tweaked an idea and you can reach out to them or through Andrea and I or Nancy or Michelle, and we can help you connect with people that are doing similar research to you. So you can maybe have like a, a natural collaborative partner for future. And um, that's another big thing about our tent is a, you'll know, start to notice that a lot of collaborative projects are done across provinces or states or countries. It doesn't have to be at your home institution. And um, when we're back face to face, you'll come to a nice auto conference with an idea or two, and you leave with 65. And you also have like 20 extra total friends you didn't have before and you're on four research projects you didn't prepare for and it is so addicting it is ridiculous and I see everybody that's been to a conference is uh, on cameras laughing because they know it's true and it's like and I went to this conference and I had such a good time and I'm on six research projects and I don't know how it happened but yay me so you're going to be just so you'll start to really start to get that energy and initiative so pay attention to that and when we meet with you guys again on Friday we're going to ask you to share some of the things you might have learned or aha moments you saw through the videos um, and have some conversation around how we can get you started if you haven't started or how to get urge you to keep going. Um, we also acknowledge that we're in pandemic times and so things are a little bit different. Um, some of the positives that have come out of that is just definitely we started to talk about new pedagogy and new ways of doing things that we might have said were never possible before. But we also acknowledge people are tired and that perhaps social projects have had to be put on hold due to the nature of not being face-to-face -face or being online or capacity. So we also have a lot of, we want um, to promote a lot of empathy during this time as well, that it just isn't the way it used to be and um, good ideas can start now or they can start in the future. So if you don't have capacity or time now, just hold on to that idea and that there, we will get over this hurdle and then those ideas will start to get going again. So that's a little piece of advice Andrew and I thought um, we'd give to you guys as you move through the next couple of days. And we're sure looking forward to um, seeing you guys on Friday when you get back to see all the aha and great moments that you had through the week. So we were going to, at this point, uh, send you off random into some randomly assigned small groups um, and, and have a, a short conversation, we'll, about 15 min minutes that we're hoping you'll have a conversation about some of the things that you're looking for. What are you looking for in the next couple of days? Either content-wise that you're hoping to get out of this, what are you hoping to get out of the ISOTL conference or the ISOTL Connect conference um, and this, this available opportunity, hopefully for people who are new to join us um, and for those who are a little bit more more experienced to connect with others. Then we'll bring you back together, um, do a shameless plug again for some of the Canadian um, presentations and some of the Canadian focused events that are going to be happening over the next couple of days. And then we will wrap up. So I've got my breakout groups. You will be invited to a small group conversation with two other people. They're all little three person groups. Um, and then I will send you a message when it's time to come back. Sounds good. There we go. All the, the rooms have opened. I think everybody has come back from all of the rooms. Fabulous. Um, so Mel, did you want to just sort of start with some of the things that asking people to share some of the things and I will prep the, um, the reminders. Perfect. Perfect. So we have about 10 minutes left and then I'm going to hop out to the ISOTL fellows office hours and we'll wrap up. But did anybody have any aha moments or in your think pair share groups um, that you want to kind of Go over with us or share with us. We'd love to hear what you talked about. I 
happy to speak on behalf of my group. Um, we had another member who had to leave, um, but I th it was sort of an interesting um, conversation. I'm relatively new to the ISOTL world, um, and we had another team member who um, has been around for quite a while and was saying that um, there have been some shifts in, in the, his organization structure. And so there's sort of a, a lull in, in incentive to, to encourage this type of work. And so he was saying he's coming to the conference to kind of reinvigorate um, that passion. Um, and I think likewise for me, kind of, I mean, I, I am passionate about it, but sort of discovering the passion through through the conference, um, being a first time attendee. Um, and yeah, just talking about how our different uh, institutes view Saddle and how we help support it um, in our own ways. Um, and yeah, hoping to learn from the conference, different people's experiences. I'll Thank chime in. Very interesting. I had the privilege of talking with Jess, uh, and, and it was so much fun because I feel very, very old and very young all at the same time, which is exactly how you want to feel at a conference. And when Nancy had mentioned 2004, um, you know, like I was, I was one of those people who was part of the old Carnegie clusters for the scholar, um, the Castle Initiatives, and and in years since, I've I've I haven't been doing scholarship and teaching and learning as much as trying to find ways to get lift off for it on college campuses and through our centers. And on one hand, it feels like, I can't believe it's 2021 and we're still trying to establish the, legit, the, the validity and the legitimacy of it. But also seeing that I think some of the most exciting work um, is coming out now. And what, you know, one of the things that we chatted about was you know, how on one hand, as educational developers, we tend to put our own um, investigations on hold because we're helping others but then we want to try to find ways to bridge that. And also um, dealing with the social justice related issues. Um, I'm so drawn to this. And uh, you know, when Randy Bass just talked about what's the problem now and, and, and brought up the 63 Martin Luther King line about the fierce urgency of now, I think that that's something that we're seeing being addressed so much in our classes. And I really hope to see what comes out of it in terms of the scholarship of teaching and learning of addressing these issues. So thank you. Um, I, I love the conversation so far. Perfect, thanks for sharing, Brian. Do we have time for one more? Does one more person wanna jump in and say what they talked about? It, what, one of the things that we talked about is kind of related um, to the previous conversation. And that is about how people just don't have the capacity for this just now, how people are tired you know, and, and just the, this fatigue that's setting in with everybody. And I think hopefully people can at least come and just watch, right? No, you don't have to move from session to session. You don't have to go to the keynotes. You can you can sit and you can watch and you can hopefully be inspired or um, even just learn something new about something that's happening somewhere else. And it's an opportunity to connect with people, but in a very low requirement of you kind of way. Um, I saw an awesome tweet uh, where somebody had said, this is the best conference they've attended as they're sitting on their couch their feet are up and they've got their computer screen in front of them you know and and i think that that's that's you know let's make the best of this if we're going to be able to take advantage of being in our homes for this kind of work then let's make ourselves comfortable let's look at it as an opportunity to engage with other people's work um and get excited or inspired with some of the things that they're doing but without putting extra pressure on ourselves to be doing that kind of stuff Speaking of which, I have also put in the chat all of the different um, hashtags and Twitter feeds and all of the things that we're hoping that if you're watching some of the sessions that you love, that you are connecting, um, putting the at ISODL hashtag, ISODL Connect 2021, um, and following what some of the other people are looking at. Um, hopefully seeing what, what some people are doing. We also want to make our little plug for Subtle Canada and some of the amazing work that's being done in Canada um, in the field of Subtle because I think that that's really exciting for some of the work that's happening in Canada. And we've also included the STLHE um, Twitter handle because many of the members of ISODL are also members of STLHE. And there's a, a nice symbiosis between those organizations as STLHE and SODL Canada to feed into the work that's happening um, at ISODL as well. So, and 
yeah. one more actual plug too is that with the the call for conference um, presentations for Steli is out and Total Canada is hosting the poster presentation sessions so that anybody who's interested in showing their existing work or new work is to put in a proposal for your your solo presentations from in a poster which then is a launching pad then back to ISOTL for Perth. Yeah, great way to do a little uh field testing of your work or talk about work in progress um, with a poster at STLHE and then carry that on to ISOTL 2021. Perhaps you'll find somebody um, in one of these presentations that you want to present with at ISOTL 2021 um, and use those connections as a way of, of bridging that and going forward. So um, at this point, I would like to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have to let Mel get ready for her office hours that are coming up. But just a reminder that there are office hours being put on by a number of the ISOTL fellows um, and other members of our community who are having hosting this opportunity to just come and chat. And it you don't have to bring a question. They can be there to be bouncing ideas off um, and, and sharing some of the thoughts and hopefully meeting people that you may not have necessarily had a chance to connect with up to this point. Um, Mel and I will join you again on Friday morning at exactly the same time. Uh, we'll be hosting a wrap up conversation. The two of us have put together a little list of things that we're going to go and watch and watch for over the next couple of days and use that as a jumping off point. Um, hopefully to have again some some conversation about some of the things that you noticed, um, some of the things that you watched, the sessions that you watched that you got inspired by, um, and that you are excited to share with the community. It was wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Enjoy the next couple of days. Um, and we look forward to seeing you on Friday morning for us. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for joining us, Nancy. We'll see yeah. you on Friday. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>